Well, they are about to go bowling in Hobart. College football bowling, that is, with the inaugural America's Crossroads Bowl. Bill Benner has more on this week's Inside Indiana Sports. Bill. Jerry, thanks. On Saturday, December 7th, Truman University from the Indianapolis-based Great Lakes Valley Conference and Ohio Dominican, also Indy-based, from the Great Midwest Conference, will square off at Hobart's Brickyard Stadium in a bowl game featuring NCAA Division II institutions. And joining us today to discuss this new endeavor are Jim Namovitz, the commissioner of the GLVC, and Katie Holderby, executive vice president of the South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority and co-host of the game with the city of Hobart. And thanks for joining us. Jim, let's start with you. How did this uh, idea, I mean, I know that you have teams that qualify for the NCAA Division II playoffs, but uh, now you have a, an additional op postseason opportunity through the bowl game. We do, Bill, and thanks very much for the opportunity You're to be welcome. with you. Um, yeah, a, a couple years ago, uh, we're, we're our eighth year as a Division II football playing conference. We're 41 years as a league, but, but only eight sponsoring football. And I was looking for an opportunity to expand postseason opportunities for our student athletes. So two years ago, we were coming back from Chicago from a volleyball tournament. We came over to the South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority, met with a gentleman by the name of Rick Flutka and said, hey, I've got an idea. We'd like to host a football bowl game. Rick knew exactly what we wanted. His daughter had been a student manager at Purdue during the Joe Tiller area, era. And um, from there, we, we've been working for two years towards this and uh, really looking forward to December 7th for the inaugural bowl game. And Katie, of course, with the, with the Visitors Bureau, you're always looking to drive uh, traffic and this seems like to, to be a, a good fit for you. Yes, we are. We're always looking to drive traffic, especially in December when we need it the most. Uh, it's a great fit at Hobart High School, um, pretty close to the city of Chicago, not far from Indy, so in any direction, it's it's accessible to both teams. And I know you've, you've cooked up a, a, a a lot of other activities beyond the football game that'll really make this a great experience for the student athletes. Talk, talk we about are, a few of those. We did. Yeah. Uh, the, stu the team arrives on Thursday, December the 5th, so we'll host them for dinner that evening. The next day on Friday, we have them busy all day uh, with uh, some interaction with Hobart High School and um, their elementary schools. In addition to that, we have a tree lighting that evening on that Friday night, so the team will interact with the community, and then the next morning, it is game time. Jim, uh, talk about and I didn't realize that uh, the other conference, the, the Great Midwest, also based in Indianapolis. So this was an easy fit for uh, you, the two leagues to get together. Made easier by the fact, Bill, that Tom Dager, who's the commissioner of the Great Midwest Athletic Conference, worked for me for five years as my associate commissioner. So, uh, yeah, their offices are right downtown Indianapolis. We're in the Pan Am building. They're, they're located above the old spaghetti factory. So. Um, it, it was really, it's been really wonderful to partner with Tom on, on this uh, initiative. And it, it was very important for both of our conferences to be able to, to do something for our football programs to expand that postseason opportunity. And, and like I said, uh, Katie and everybody up in Hobart and from the South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority have been so helpful and accommodating. We think we're going to put on a really great show for both teams and for the fans. Katie, there's another great new sports, uh, the Mascot Hall of Fame is up there. And they and you're going to get there in Munster, right? They're uh, in Whiting. Uh, Whiting, yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, uh, but you're going to interact with the, with the Mascot Hall of Fame and make them part of the game. Yes, uh, they opened a year ago, and we're going to include them in the game. So Reggie, uh, the mascot from the Mascot Hall of Fame, will be out in the stands, and then during the halftime show, he'll be he'll be putting on uh, he'll be playing with some other mascots and entertaining the fans. In addition to that, uh, we'll have some ba local bands playing, and I think that Truman is going to have their they band are. as well. They are. And you got Jim Corneliuson, the famous yes. Jim Corneliuson. Jim Corneliuson is singing, singing the, the national, national yeah. anthem. He opened uh, for the hundredth anniversary of the NFL this year, the Bears against the Packers in Chicago. So we're really looking forward to as, seeing him. As we wrap up, if people want to, uh, whomever want to make the trip, uh, how they learn about more game information. Yeah, so head to americascrossroadsbowl.com for ticket information. We'll have ticket information as well as any information on hotels, restaurants, packages um, that families, teams, um, those interested in the game can come to. We'll also have wearables on there and everything they need to find out more about the game. All right, well, Katie Holbert from the South Shore Convention Business Authority and my good friend Jim Nomovich from the GLBC. Thanks for being on the show. Have a great inaugural bowl game. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, back to you.